Hey what is up guys, Jed here and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about intermittent fasting myths. Yes, that's right, the good old myths. This is going to be an interesting one. So if you guys are looking forward to that, go ahead and do me a favor and give this video a like. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. <clears throat> okay, this is coming from Forbes.com. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that website down in the description below so that you guys can follow along if you want. Skipping breakfast. Man, we are already off to a good start. All right, so first of all, I don't know who or what came up with the thought that intermittent fasting means skipping breakfast, all right? First of all, you're not skipping breakfast. Let's say I decided to do, you know, 16-8, keep it pretty basic. And if I did that, generally what I would personally do is I would have my first meal at 10 a.m. So let's say I decided to go with 16-8. What I personally do is I have my first meal at 12, my eating window around eight. So as you can see, 12 p.m. is, you know, obviously not considered breakfast anymore. So people would think that you're skipping breakfast if you're doing intermittent fasting, which is not the case. If you did 16-8 and this specific schedule is the one that you went with, meaning that you wanted to eat at 12 p.m. just like me, having your first meal at 12 p.m., all that means is that if you, if you had Pop-Tarts for breakfast or if you have cereal or if you have pancakes, if you used to have that around 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever, all intermittent fasting is telling you to do is to just move it up. So if you used to have pancakes or Pop-Tarts in the morning around 8, now that you're doing intermittent fasting, that just means you have to have it around 12 or 1 p.m. Like I said, if this was the exact schedule you decided to go with. So you are not skipping breakfast. All right, moving on to myth number two. IF is the miracle cure for weight loss. On to another good one. For some reason, people think that intermittent fasting is a an instant magic cure for weight loss, right? So if you're someone who's struggling with losing weight, they're like, Oh, I can introduce this to someone else because, hey, I heard that intermittent fasting works like a charm. It's magic, you know, it, once you do it, it's like saying if you, if you introduced intermittent fasting to someone else and said, hey, have you heard about intermittent fasting? It's really good for weight loss. You should really try the 16-8 and then you'll lose weight. When in reality, that is true to a certain extent, but you haven't really given that person all the details, right? You haven't, you ha all you told them to do was to just follow 16-8 and that's it. Right? You didn't tell them the amount of calories they have to eat. You didn't tell them that it helps if you eat healthier instead of junk food. You didn't tell them that there are still certain foods you should avoid because they're very caloric. So yeah, intermittent fasting is not a miracle cure for weight loss. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. Just like any other method that exists for weight loss, you still have to put in a lot of effort for this, okay? It's not just something you can tell someone, hey, go ahead and follow the schedule and then boom weight loss instantly. It's not how it works, guys. Well, moving on to myth number three, all intermittent fasting is the same. Actually, my friend, it's not the same. They're very different. So again, let's take one of the most basic intermittent fasting methods, which is 16-8, which is where you have an eight hour eating window and you fast for 16 hours, right? Pretty simple. Now, if you compare that to, let's say we decided to go with 20 hours of fasting, with a four hour eating window, according to this myth, those two schedules are completely the same, when in reality, they're absolutely different. How do I know this? Well, let's put it, let's try to paint a bigger picture here. With 16-8, you have a longer eating window, which means you have, I'd say, a lot more room for more meals and snacks compared to a four hour eating window where you'll most likely be having two meals with either one snack, two snacks, or no snacks. Really differentiates these two schedules. So no, quite frankly, not all intermittent fasting schedules are the same. Myth number four, IF is good for everyone. No, it's not. I can introduce it to someone who's interested in losing weight, but if this person was a kid, you know, I would change my mind. I would say, okay, you know, you're still, you still got a lot of growing up to do. It's okay to overeat per se, since you're still growing, you can always lose it later. Young people would definitely be the audience that I would not introduce it to, especially if you're like below the age of, for me personally, I would say, I would say probably 15 or 14. Anything below that, I wouldn't recommend IF at all. And the other category of people would have to be people that are already relatively lean or skinny. There is no logical reason that you should be wanting to do IF. No reason whatsoever. Same thing with pregnant people. Uh, I also wouldn't, I also personally wouldn't recommend IF to them since, you know, it's a baby. 
just get the nutrients that you need. But yeah, the point being, IF is not for everyone. All right, myth number five, you should eat anything you want during the eating window. Now, my opinion on this is sort of half and half, right? Because in a lot of videos I've made in the past, I always say that you can eat whatever you want, but you have to be smart about it. Now, if I mentioned IF to someone who's not experienced, if I said you can go out there and do IF and eat whatever you want, they will literally do exactly what I just said. And eating whatever you want means eating how much you want, at least from their interpretation, which is not the case. You have to be willing to make a sacrifice if you want to do that. Like for example, say you're someone who enjoys eating ice cream. If you want to eat ice cream, you can. But that means there has to be a sacrifice with that as well. Meaning if you wanted to eat ice cream, you have to be willing to remove something else that you normally eat throughout the day. So let's say normally I eat cereal for breakfast and normally I eat turkey and rice for lunch. And then normally I have like broccoli and I don't know, beef or whatever sort of protein source that you would want for dinner. If you wanted to have ice cream, it would look something like this. I'm going to have cereal for breakfast. I'm not going to have what I normally have for lunch. Matter of fact, I'm going to have something probably smaller so that I can fit in that ice cream for lunch. And then of course, moving on to your regular dinner. That is how it works when you want to add things that you want to eat when doing IF. And if you don't do that, then no, you can't eat whatever you want during your eating window. Okay, so that's, like I said, you have to be smart about it if you choose to eat things that you want rather than what you need to. Myth number six, IF can impair your mental alertness and focus. No, as a matter of fact, from my experience, again, I actually found that uh, when I started doing IF, I became a lot more focused, I became a lot more alert, and I actually became stronger in my lifts in the gym. See, because before I discovered IF, I was following just, you know, your regular old basic gym routine where I, you know, I, I, I follow a certain amount of repetitions and try to get stronger each time and that was working, right? And one, one of my favorite lifts was uh, the bench press, right? I used to, uh, I used to be able to go all the way up to, I think, I believe it was just 220, 225. That was my max. That was my PR. And that was before I was doing um, IF, right? And in both these scenarios, I was in a caloric deficit. And when you're in a caloric deficit, generally, you, you know, you start to lose strength because you're eating less. So that means less strength. But when I was doing IF and I was still in that deficit, I noticed I was actually getting way stronger. I'm not really sure if that had to do with the, the sort of training routine that I was doing, or it really does have to do with IF. I'm willing to bet that it has to do with IF. So my max used to be 225, right? And that was before IF. But when I started doing it, when I started doing intermittent fasting, my lift went all the way to 250, okay? And that's still in a deficit, but that's now with intermittent fasting. So I'm just gonna leave that thought there. You can take it how you want. But from my experience, I've definitely got more alertness, more focus, and more strength. Myth number seven, intermittent fasting slows down your metabolism. Metabolism doesn't really have much to do when it comes to weight loss, okay? That's my, that's my opinion. And the reason I say that is because I train a lot of people, right? When it comes to losing weight, even until this day, I train a lot of people. And you know, as you can imagine, not everyone's metabolism is the same. You have some people that have a slow metabolism, meaning you know, they, they might have a harder time losing weight, whereas compared to someone with a faster metabolism, they, you know, they tend to burn a lot more calories fairly easily. But out of all those people I've trained, I always told them to use the method of intermittent fasting and caloric restriction, and everyone lost weight. All right, moving on to myth number eight. Intermittent fasting makes you overindulge. I'm sure that with a little bit of common sense, you guys know the answer to that. Myth number nine, you are supposed to restrict your water intake too during the fasting window. Mm. Mm, 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 Guys. Guys. Ah. Guys, I don't know, man. <laughs> Please just drink your water. If you actually believe myth number nine, please stop believing that please. <laughs> you are supposed to restrict your water intake too during the fasting window. No. Okay. Please drink your water. Drinking water helps you lose weight. All right. 
And last but not least, myth number 10. Intermittent fasting puts your body into starvation mode. So for you guys that have been following me for a while and you remember that video that I made specifically about starvation mode, I suggest you go and watch that after watching this video. But anyway, to summarize it, basically, in my opinion, I believe that starvation mode does not exist. It's not a real thing. It's just something that people, you know, choose to believe is a thing, but really it's not. So a lot of people think that intermittent fasting is starving yourself, and that's far from the truth, okay? Intermittent fasting is not starving yourself. Matter of fact, go ahead and look up what a starving person actually looks like and try to put yourself right beside that. Do you really honestly think you're starving? No, okay? So the act of intermittent fasting is not starving yourself, okay? It's just lim limiting yourself to a specific time to eat, and a specific time to not eat, and with a combination of restricting your calories. That's not even anything close to, to starvation mode. And even if starvation mode was a thing, I believe it's just something people, I believe it's just a situation that people put themselves without even knowing it because of the timing of their meals and the size of their meals. So if you are someone who ate breakfast but you didn't eat enough, obviously, the next time you have your meal, you're gonna feel like you're starving, you know, because you, you ate something small. Or if you had breakfast maybe 8 a.m. and then you had your next meal at, let's say, I don't know, 4 p.m., right? That's a really, really late lunch, possibly even already dinner. You're going to feel like you're starving, okay? And that's not because of intermittent fast. That's because people were not aware of, you know, when it was time to eat or they weren't aware of the size of their meal. And that's, you know, that's pretty much why people think that starvation mode is connected with intermittent fasting but i'm here to reassure you that it's not anyway that's all i gotta say about that if you guys are interested in learning more about weight loss and intermittent fasting be sure to check out my last video where i talk about the best food to break a fast when intermittent fasting all right guys if you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and tap that notification bell so that you never miss out on any future videos also don't forget to give this video a like if you found this helpful and comment down below letting me know did you believe one of these myths and with that said i will see you guys next time